Yo, what is going on guys, it's Professor Loki, and in this video we're going to be talking about Smite 2, and more specifically about Loki, who would have guessed. Now as I was watching this uh, preview, uh, more specifically the IGN uh, preview, Smite 2, the first preview, um, this shows some extra gameplay that had, that wasn't shown in the Smite announcement. Um, if you guys know any more like clips of, Lo of Loki in, in, in this game that isn't shown officially, by all means, let me know which uh, channel they have it on. Um, but I specifically wanted to talk about Loki in Smite 2. Now, of course, this is all like completely theoretical and it obviously may change so everything i'm saying now isn't absolutely the truth i just need to make this very important that this is alpha footage so what i'm what i'm saying what i'm seeing completely different so let's get straight into it um let's talk about loki's first ability vanish right now i'm assuming that vanish is actually hold on, let me see if i can fix this here oh uh, yeah okay loki's vanish is kind of like different than his first vanish first off it leaves a kind of like a clone <coughs> some similar to al kuang's um first ability and that and that clone by the way disappears I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure i don't think it stays could be a bug i'm not sure but i do think it disappears and then loki kind of becomes like this very weird like a like a black silhouette kind of character i don't really like this um i, I prefer the ghostly see-through kind of loki and again this is alpha so it's not permanent, right? But that's it. And, but also notice that his stealth feels kind of instant, like the old days of Loki. I'm not sure about that, but it could be that Loki's stealth is actually no longer like this. Um, like it kind of flickers and then goes into stealth. Like it actually just instant stealth. I could be wrong. Um, <clears throat> I want you guys to pay attention to where my mouse is. My mouse is right here next to Hydra's Laments Baba Facet. You'll see these two icons. Now this is normal, just like in Smite 1. Uh, this one on the left is bleed, and this one on the right is the actual vanish buff, right? So, just notice something here. So this Loki wants to alt this on her who's doing an unsuspecting camp. Unsuspecting on her doing a camp. And he does land the alt. Now notice something. He is still invisible while he is ulting. These two buff icons, still there. He's still black, right? He still has a black silhouette, the vanishy kind of character. He's still invisible. He is still invisible. I'm going frame by frame, by the way. He's still, he's still, look, look, he's completely invisible. This on her has no idea he's there. Completely invisible, completely invisible, completely invisible. And then once, look at that. Once the damage comes in from Loki's ultimate, he is now revealed. You can see the little shadowy part kind of dissipating from his body, meaning it's like he's no longer invisible. You can see the buff icon is not only one. This is the bleed, right? So he is no longer invisible. And this is crazy. This is this is massive. If I am right, this is a great buff to Loki. Basically, what does this mean? Let's look back here. Look, at, what, what is this? What is this right here? Hmm. It it's it shows that something happened there, but obviously the on her did not take damage. What happened? So for current Loki, this is the sequence of it, right? It's crippled damage, right? Into like stun damage, right? Or damage. It's like damage cripple into damage stun. That's the sequence. So it's you, when you meet with the first instance of Loki's ult is damage cripple, and then he does a little backflip and then he shoots outwards, which is damage and then stun. Here's my theory. They made it where Loki can now stealth and ult until you do the first instance of damage. And this effect right here is the cripple, but no damage. So it's now cripple, damage, damage done. So there's now three parts instead of two parts, right? So right now, so let me, let me go back and forth. Let me, let me make this obvious. So right now he ults, he cripples. This is instant cripple. The on her is now crippled, without seeing Loki, right? Cripple, 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 no damage yet, but the on her is still crippled. Cripple, 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 damage, right? Loki's revealed, right? And then of course, into the normal sequence, into the <laughs> damage stun, see? 387, stun, right? So why is this important? This is very important because first off, how many times have you ulted someone and they just turn around and just attack you? 
while you're still ulting. Um, this allows Loki to actually initiate with his ult without the enemy just instantly turning around and killing you. And um, this is more of a problem in higher level play. So like, you know, when, when people ha start to have the ability to react very quickly, this is not a problem for casual players who just can respond anyways. Um, but this just allows Loki to actually initiate with ult without having to worry about them instantly turning around and damaging you. And also this means that the cripple is applied first instantly. Um, so that may fix some of the weird cripple issues that Loki ult has, but that could just be like some weird bugs that hasn't been fixed yet, which makes, you know, which is fine. Well, it's not fine, but the point is, I hope that this is the case. And tomorrow, right now, it is twelve twenty. It is twelve thirty in the morning um, of Saturday. Uh, the patch notes will literally happen in like a um, in ten hours, right, uh, or whatever. Uh, so um, maybe the Loki and Smite one will also have this effect where he can stealth, alt, and still be invisible until the first instance of damage. So remember, current Loki is the cripple and damage are together, and then the damage and stun is together. So that's two instances, right? Now it's going to be cripple, nothing, no damage, cripple, then no damage, into damage, into damage stun. So <clears throat> this is my theory, that Loki's ult is going to be reworked into something like this to allow Loki to have a better initiation tool. It's, it, it is a massive buff. Now, it's, it's, it's a good buff for Loki ult. Um, but that's not it. So that, that's just the first thing. Now is the second thing to notice is the, so Loki's one is still the same. Um, Loki's decoy. So we're going to go here, right? Loki, Loki throws a decoy down. You can see the decoy is spawning here, right? Um, I want to quickly just check one second here. It seems the decoy has a bit of a delay. As you can see, the decoy doesn't instantly spawn. It's not like Smite's uh, decoy in Smite 1. You can see that there's a bit of a delay to it. Now, I could be wrong, but I think there's a, like, a, like, a, like a half a second delay before it's fully deployed, right? Um, if That could be in the response because of the Merlin build. Uh, the Merlin build is you throw the instant, the decoy instantly spawned, gives a tick of damage. Um, so that might be the response to that. Also notice the look of the decoy is different. It's no longer like agonizing visioning where Loki's on the floor having poison dropped in his face. It's actually old Loki's decoy, how he's like spinning his daggers, right? And taunting you. But instead of the taunt, I, I don't think it taunts. It could taunt, I don't know. Um, you, you see, you see, it's just a giant pool of a swishy black shadowy thing that does damage over time. It's still agonizing vision. The, um, like the icon looks like agonizing vision and one of the scenes where odin was taking damage from the decoy had like a debuff meaning they're taking they're dealing less damage that's what loki's decoy does now so but that's not it i want you to look at something here loki's three is doing 93 92 whatever damage 96 i don't know it's kind of inconsistent there's a 75 in there. Do you see that? 75, 75. What do you think that 75 is coming from? It's the decoy. The decoy. Remember, Loki's bleed. I think Loki's bleed is actually... Um, let me see here. So, 409. Okay, the bleed is 93. And I think Loki's 3 is a 96. Yeah, Loki's 3 is a 96. Loki's 1 is a 93. That's where the... Okay. And then that 75 is coming out of nowhere. Where is that 75 coming from? The decoy. But you might be thinking, 75 per tick? That's a lot, guys. That's a lot of damage. I think that they buffed Loki's decoy damage in this. Like, Loki's 3 is doing 96. Loki's 1 is doing 93 per tick. This decoy is doing 75 per tick. That's a lot. And also, I saw in one of these clips where the player is maxing Loki's decoy second. They max the three, then the two, not the one. What does that mean? Why would you not? Why would you? Like, normally you max the three, then the one, and then the two. The two is last. But the Vanish was last in one of the players. And I thought maybe it's because he's a new player. Like, he doesn't really understand how Loki works or something. But seeing this, and then I'm just connecting the dots here. Maybe Loki's 2. I don't think Loki's 2 does more damage than his 1. But the fact that it's AoE, its potential damage is far more than Loki's 1. 
if you're doing 75 per tick on the whole camp or the whole like three enemy guys or whatever, you're doing way more damage than bleed. I would still match the one because it's confirmed damage. However, this is interesting to see that Loki's decoy is actually hitting kind of hard. Okay. This, this makes Loki a far better initiator with a one, one auto, two auto, three combo, because if they stay in the two, they're going to take a lot of damage. And this also tells me that Loki's decoy probably won't apply on hit effects. This is to nerf the whole Merlin build for Loki. So the whole build where you go blue stone, heart seeker, and abuse item procs on Loki's decoy, it makes kind of sense. It looks like the decoy is delayed, so it doesn't instantly spawn. And it does far more damage, which means that they probably buff Loki's decoy damage, but in return, it probably doesn't apply uh, on hit effects. Maybe. I don't know. This is all, everything I've said is still purely speculation. Now there's a, excuse me, there's a last thing I want to talk about. Look at Loki's three here. Look how large this cone is. Do you see this, guys? Look at how large this cone is. My goodness, guys, you guys want to see a comparison, right? Let me show you right here. You can see right here that Loki's D Loki's three in smite one is far more narrow, right? The length is the same, but the width, it's actually more of a, of, of, of like a, a, of a circle here, right? It's, it's a bigger chunk of the pie. So this means that Loki's three is also wider. It actually kind of doesn't go, it doesn't go behind Loki, but it kind of like, you can see the line right here. It, it doesn't stop directly at Loki's feet like it does here, right? Because this is very narrow. This one is like this, the one on the left. But you can see like the Loki's flurry strike also works to his side. So that means anyone who's to his side here is going to take damage. It's definitely increased. Unless I'm crazy. But I don't think I am. Like these lines are definitely wider, and I think you guys might may may see it or may agree with me too. If not, just call me crazy. It's fine. But yeah, those are all the things I've noticed about Loki in just the first six seconds of the clip. I know, quite perceptive, right? quite perceptive, right? However, that's not the only thing I want to talk about. I know that there are things. Okay, people are gonna be people ask me this on, on on Twitch. I will be streaming, by the way, eleven in the morning Eastern time. The the, the season eleven patch notes. Hopefully, maybe Loki will get buffed there too. Maybe maybe what's here it will be happening to Loki because the problem with Loki right now is just a two bot. He presses two and that's it, which is a problem. So maybe they're addressing them. Maybe they're reworking him again. They're they're making his ult a little bit more um, confident in ulting it, and they're making his decoy hit harder, but no longer proc item effects. I don't know. Smite 2. What are, what are my, my, what is my general thoughts about Smite 2? I am obviously excited. I think it's great. Um, I think Smite 1 is outdated. Obviously, it's running an, it's running an engine made in 06, 2006. Uh, <laughs> uh, right in the beginning of the housing crash. It's, it's just not, it, it just, the game looks bad. Smite 1 looks like a cartoony kind of plastic, play doh kind of game. But, but it's kind of impressive on how decently they made the characters look even from an outdated engine. So I do think that's impressive. Um, but just remember that Smite 2 is completely rebuilt from ground up. The building blocks that were created back in 2010 or whatever Smite Alpha 1 was, um, they're, they're, they never really foreseen this, right? So they were just kind of doing whatever they can with, with Unreal Engine 3. And then the new development had to work around those building blocks. Those building blocks were kind of crumbling. So anything they put on top... They got to be careful, right? That's why people talk about the spaghetti code thing. Yeah, it's because of that probably, right? Um, so Smite 2, you rebuild the building blocks completely from ground up and you're creating them sturdier so they can hold the future like longer, right? So this is a very good thing. Anyone who complains about this, I'm sorry, but I think you're definitely in the wrong here. And I think you're just complaining because you're selfish. Um, this is very good. The only downside of this is I did hear the skin thing. Uh, my opinion of this is that it's, it's, it's ouch. I, it definitely does hurt for those who don't know, uh, any skins from between season zero to, to season 10 will not transfer over. And the compensation is you get all the gems you've ever gotten on smite one to smite two. So if you got a, let's say, let's say you have a, a 1 million gems in smite one, you will now have 1 million gems in smite two, but they're called legacy gems. So they're separate from normal gems in smite two. And 
every time you want to purchase a skin, let's say a skin costs 800 gems, you can spend 400 from your legacy smite gems uh, and then the other 400 being the actual gems in the game, which means you still have to buy skins. So you still have to spend money, but basically let's assume everything is a 50% discount. Assume that things are at a 50% discount. That's what you gotta say. So people like me who played since day, like day one of Smite, we will always have a 50% discount for a long time because we have lots of lots of gems racked up, especially if you spend a lot of money. And if you buy the legacy pass thingy, you double that. So basically, if you, I mean, it sucks. It does if you have to still buy gems. I don't care. I'm sorry that this affects you mostly. I never cared about skins. I made this very obvious, very vocal. I don't care about skins. These are these are choices that you're making. You're choosing to waste money on Unreal Engine 3 skins. Um, I don't really, I, I stopped doing that ever since I think 2016, 17. Um, I'd realized how just bad the game looks and there's no way I'm gonna invest money into this. Um, but I might now spend money on Smite 2 because that game actually looks worth it, right? If I spend, like, people are spending 20 to $40 on skins in Unreal Engine 3. Uh, no way, Jose. I can buy a, I can buy a bunch of games on Steam off of that. <laughs> this is not worth my buck. But anyway, I'm not going to go off that. Um, that is all. My opinion about Smite 2 is amazing. I, I, I fully support it. Uh, the Relic system, I'm a little suspicious of. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, it's kind of like League, how you... you Items can have pass. Items can have actives now. Um, uh, the physical magical change. Uh, it's the same thing. The nothing change. It's just like League of Legends now. Physical magical AD AP, AP uh, strength intelligence. These are all just semantics. It's all just words. They all mean the same thing, right? All the only thing you gotta know is that some characters in Smite Two are gonna have both physical and magical scaling. Uh, for example, Odin's three. The, th the three that he, the spear that he throws will be physical. The pulse is magical. Um, and, and then for auto attacks, if you're hitting someone physically, like a Ymir, like a Ymir auto attack, that's physical, right? If you're spitting gust of air, like Kukulkin's auto attacks, it's magical. It's just take it literally, right? Bacchus has a jump stick. He beats you with it. It's a physical move. When Bacchus jumps on you, it's a physical touch. It's a physical move. When Bacchus burps at you, it's a magical, right? So, Take these things literally, and nothing again. Nothing changes except now every character can buy any any item they want, and that's it's literally it's just it's, it's like League. It's very similar to League. Um, so yeah, overall pretty good. I'm excited to try out. I already signed up for Alpha. Hope you did too. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, take care, stay safe, peace.